Hi, my name is Mark, and I'm here to speak with you about my paralyzed vocal cord and the thought process I went through trying to solve that problem. I had had uh, surgery that went through the front of my neck, unrelated to my voice problem, and when I awoke after surgery, I was unable to speak at least unable to speak in a normal manner because the during the surgery uh, my right vocal cord had been paralyzed. Um, it's important to note that it's very, very uncommon that someone who has surgery through the front of their neck will find that they have a paralyzed vocal cord. But it is a known complication and I did an awful lot of research to try to understand how to deal with this problem and what my odds were for my voice returning on its own in a natural way. And one of the reasons I'm talking to you right now is, is that when I was doing my research, I, I found it quite difficult to find information on what my outcome might be. And I also found it very difficult, actually I found it impossible to find a single person anywhere who had shared their story uh, on the internet or, or volunteered to, to their doctor to share their information with people like me. So with my research I did find that most people who have this problem will, will see that their voice returns naturally within a 12-month time period. But if your voice has not returned after 12 months, the odds are extremely unlikely that it's going to return on its own. And, and luckily there are surgical alternatives that can allow people to be able to speak after they have had a paralyzed vocal cord. Uh, people whose voices do not return on their own, like myself, they, it is the very small minority, but it, it does happen. So uh, I'm here to talk with you about how I decided to, to fix my voice. The local doctors with whom I spoke and, and, and looked at my problem, uh, told me that there is a temporary solution that would help me talk for a period of, of weeks as I waited for my voice to come back on its own. Now, if, if you were to look down your throat, you, you would see that your vocal cords look sort of like a V, and it's my right vocal cord that was paralyzed, and it was laying wide open. Now, in order to... to have a normally functioning voice with two working vocal cords, when they come together like this, that is what gives you your voice. But my one was paralyzed wide open so that when my good vocal cord moved, it did not have a mate that it could hit. So I was forced to simply whisper when I felt inclined to, and if I wanted to try to talk, my voice was extremely hoarse and, and all but non-functional. I mean, I, I could communicate with people, but it was, it, was, it was not comfortable, it was not enjoyable, but I was waiting because it was my hope that sometime over the 12-month period my voice would return on its own. But it did not, and the, the local doctors that I saw told me that they could go in to my vocal cord and do what is called a medialization. And that is where they would go in and put a permanent piece in my neck to, to move that vocal cord over so that when my working vocal cord moved, it had a mate to hit and would give me a voice. And I knew that that was an option. But I wasn't comfortable 
with making a quick decision on that. I, I kept researching and I kept researching because I, I just wanted to know if there were other options out there that I was unaware of. And unfortunately, my local doctors did not tell me about laryngeal re-innervation. And I learned about that on the internet. I studied up on it. I called doctors with with a friend of mine who could be my voice on the phone. And my wife made calls, all trying to gather information to understand what laryngeal reinnervation was all about. And the more I researched it, the more I was convinced that that was a better option for me. Now, I'm not here to convince you that laryngeal reinnervation is better than medialization because I don't know that because I did not get a medialization. But it did seem for me to be a more natural and more common sense approach to offering me the best chance to have the best voice I could have as I age through the rest of my life. So I, uh, I, I want to explain a little bit about what reinnervation is. When I spoke about a medialization, when, when a doctor would go in and put an object into that vocal cord or behind it, I'm not exactly sure how it is, but there's a foreign object in there that moves the vocal cord over so that the working vocal cord has something to hit and then would provide a, a more normal voice. Now with laryngeal reinnervation, um, a doctor would go into your neck and take a nerve from a muscle in your neck, patch it into this muscle, and then that nerve grows into your vocal cord and naturally bulks that up and moves it over. Now the result is the same as a medialization, which is giving your working vocal cord a mate to hit and providing a voice. And it, it for me, it just seemed like I wanted a more natural approach. I wanted that muscle to be bulked up into more of its natural form. And, and it's my belief that as I age, that that is going to age with me. Uh, one concern I had about the medialization, and I, I cannot say that this is true because I don't know, but it, it seemed to me that if I had a foreign object in my neck to help me speak, that as I aged and my body's changing and muscles are changing and that foreign object is staying the same, that I couldn't be certain that, that my voice would stay the same. Now, obviously, I, I can't be certain about the re as well, but for me, it just seemed like common sense that if I have my own nerves bulking that muscle up into its normal form, that it, it, it's just a more sensible solution. If you have a laryngeal re done, it's also important to note that the results do not come on quickly. If you were to get a medialization, the results are, are pretty much instantaneous. They, they move that vocal cord over and when you want to talk again, it's there and, and it's working. With laryngeal re you do have to wait for that nerve to grow into that muscle and bulk it up and move it over so that you're allowed that so that you can speak. Now when I had my surgery, um, they did the doctor did do a temporary medialization while he was doing the surgery so that in the in the weeks following the surgery I was able to speak a little better than I was before. But when that temporary medialization wore off and my voice was going back to being non-existent, about two months after surgery, I noticed that my voice was starting to improve. And 
and something I hadn't felt in about 15 to 17 months. And it, it was pretty exciting to be able to speak and to know that that surgery was indeed working. Now, what I was wondering was, how, how well is it going to work? Now, I was confident that it was going to work well, so I, I just went about my life. It kept improving, and up to about six months after surgery, my voice continued to improve, and, and I was thrilled with the results. And it's been about a year now since I had my surgery, and I do believe that it continues to improve. Now, I, I don't know if it's improvements to the tone of the muscle in there, or if it's just my my voice learning how to work with this this new voice box that I've got. Uh, the the exciting thing for me is that the results that I'm experiencing right now are better than I expected. I, I was worried that I, I might end up whispering or have a hoarse voice for the rest of my life. I, I enjoy playing my guitar and singing, and I was worried that I would never be able to sing again. And what I have found is that my voice generally sounds exactly like it did before. Now, since it's my voice, I can tell the limitations. I can tell it doesn't sound 100% like it used to, but those around me who my family included, it sounds the same to them. Now, I will say that my voice is not as, it doesn't have the stamina that it used to have. Uh, if I'm in a loud room, I, I can't talk over loud music and loud conversation for as long as I used to. Uh, my singing voice, I, I don't have the range that I used to have. I don't have the stamina that I used to have. But my fear was that I would not be able to sing ever again, and that is not true. So I'm thrilled that I'm able to do that. Um, now, I want to be clear that I'm not here to tell you that laryngeal re is better, is a better alternative than a medialization. Because I can't know that. I didn't get a medialization. But I... I want you to understand that if you have a paralyzed vocal cord and you have a doctor who is telling you that you should get a medialization done to correct your problem, that may very well be the best solution for you. But you must understand that it's not the only option and laryngeal re is an option. It's the option to me that seemed the most sensible and seemed most likely to give me the best results. So if, if you have a doctor who's not telling you about that, do your research on the internet. Call doctors anywhere to gather this information and make sure you can make, make an informed decision. Uh, I found a superb doctor to do my laryngeal re surgery and and I had to fly to a different state to to get this surgery done but I'm thrilled that I did and if this information that I've shared with you is useful that is the purpose I'm doing this because it was so difficult for me to find information and and make a wise decision. But I, I hope this helps out and best of luck and when your voice comes back, it may not be perfect, but believe me, it is wonderful to, to be able to speak, to be able to sing, to be able to communicate. And even if it's not perfect, it is a wonderful, wonderful thing to be able to speak again. Best of luck.